What's going on OmniBuddies, Mitch here, and today we are doing another OmniBuddy overview. What are we looking at? We're looking at Stranger Things Deluxe Edition Volume 1. All right, so Stranger Things, start things off. I absolutely love that Netflix series. Uh, I am beyond excited for, it's not really the final season, it's like the final two seasons because it's like a two-parter season, but it's like each part is the length of a season. So there's like two seasons coming out, two more seasons coming out, but they are in tandem and they kind of flow together. I, I don't know. I'm really excited for it. And then when I noticed that there were uh, comics that uh, went into more of the lore of the show and all that kind of stuff, I got really, really excited because it's been a long time since we've had any Stranger Things. And then I found out it goes into a lot of the, the behind, not the behind the scenes, but like filling in the gaps on what characters were doing and uh, different things that happened. Yeah, very excited. So I picked up Deluxe Edition Volume 1 and 2. This overview is just on Deluxe Edition Volume 1. And this is by Jody Hauser and a ton of other creators because uh, there's uh, three different uh, books within this one. So it's like three different mini series. Some of them are a couple issues. A few of them are like three to four issues. So they kind of vary in lengths, but there's three story arcs in here and they're awesome. So we're going to take a look at Deluxe Edition Volume 1 of Stranger Things. All right, so here we have the Stranger Things Deluxe Edition, uh, Library Edition, Volume 1 by Jody Hauser. Uh, it has got a bunch of different artists because uh, it's got three different stories in it, and each one, uh, I believe each one, is uh, um, done by a different artist. And here is the uh, spine shot. Uh, this is by Dark Horse, again, so it matches up with all those other great Dark Horse volumes. Uh, it does retail for $39.99. Uh, or you can get it way cheaper at our channel sponsor organic price books uh, that is the back shot as it were the back of the book uh, let's get this thing open though it's got that cool spot gloss uv spot gloss on the uh, logo there if you can see i love the colors on this thing and demi gordon gort gordon gorgon front and center super cool all the characters in there love it uh, just some plain black end sheets uh, this book opens super easy i uh, broke in the spine once really quickly and then read it once and it just, I mean, look at this, first, first page just kind of stays right open. It's awesome. Uh, and it has a decent eye hole when you do open it. I mean, look at that. Super nice for such a thin, I mean, it's thinner, but um, it's got a really nice eye hole. So that was, that was good to see. Uh, so it's got, um, oh, I guess four, four stories. Sorry, the other side science camp game master which uh yeah kind of work in tandem and um erica's quest so uh these are all by jody hauser except for erica's quest which is greg pack and then i uh, got a bunch of different artists gabriel and uh abraham uh mustafa and edgar salazar and stefano martino and then there's a ton for inks and colors and lettering and all that so very cool. Um, here is a quick look at the uh, front page. Love the color of this book. So cool. The colors are great. Um, so this one, uh, what's this one called? This is uh, uh, The Other Side. So this is all about what happens when Will goes to the other side, the upside down. And uh, basically the Demi Gorgon, Gorgon is chasing him. He's trying to figure out what the heck is going on, where he is, why he's here, and then also just survive it. And it's telling basically the entire season from his perspective. And it tells it pretty quickly, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but they do mention that time passes totally differently here. So it makes sense that um, he's here for what seems like maybe a day or so, maybe two days. Um, but, you know, he's gone for a long time and they call off the search and uh, it goes through uh, his um, playing D&D &D with his friends and kind of how it uh, 
go kind of uh, traveling as a party when you're on your own you're you're kind of screwed and now he's on his own in real life and the upside down so it's kind of uh, working together in h how he views DD and real life and how he's going to stay alive and then when he meets 11 um, and uh, working through the TV and finding the portals if you haven't seen the show this book isn't going to make much sense at all so you need to have seen the show um, and be really into the show. And they're saying, you know, I haven't watched season one in forever. So going back, I'm like, oh, the letters on the wall, of course. Yeah, that's right. And uh, just how they all communicated and through the phone. And so it was a really cool um, kind of blast to what what happened in season one. And I'm remembering it as I'm reading it. It was just super cool, super well done. Um, good suspense too uh, within it and how he he's figuring things out and learns to be brave and all that. Uh, I think this was the longest story of all of them in here. Um, but I won't go too much into all that, but you know, obviously it's like, that's a season two monster and it's in this book, uh, which I think is season one, I believe. And yeah, so, and then we have science camp, which is like the slasher movie, uh, thing. And this is, uh, with following Dustin as he's off at summer camp, summer science camp, and he's uh, doing his thing and enjoying life and trying to deal with science camp bullies because they're normally the bottom of the totem pole, I guess, in social hierarchy, at least back in the day in the 80s when this was all happening. Um, and so now, you know, dealing with the bullies there and talking about D&D &D and then things get a little crazy because... Uh, uh, people start disappearing and uh, no one's noticing. People think they're just quitting and there is a slasher on and about. And uh, basically they, uh, Dustin and his, uh, the camp kids figure it out. And Dustin, you know, he's used to, you know, fighting the Demigorgon and monsters and the upside down and crazy things happening. And so one little, uh, uh, you know, murderer, you know, lake house murderer, uh, isn't going to stop him from solving this mystery and, uh, you know, finding a lady along the way, as you see in the show, you know, where he meets his lady and, uh, pretty cool art. Uh, really enjoyed this one. I actually like this art better than the first, the first one, uh, on the other side, it was just a little bit too close to real for me. Um, just almost a weird uncanny valley. Uh, it was good art. It's just not my, my taste, my style. This is more my style where it's, you know, very much fits the characters, but uh, is more stylized towards the comics. Um, and very cool resolution. I'm not going to get into it, but, you know, he's, Dustin just kind of becomes the BA of the group and leads them and shows them what it is to be brave and uh, to fight back. And it's, it's pretty cool. And then uh, we go into, uh, oh, that's what this one was. Yeah, it was a pretty short story on um, dealing with Will and um, the aftermath of, of, you know, all this scary stuff. And he's missing uh, 11. And yeah, and it's just kind of a nice little story that helps to tie up some ends and shows some emotional beats, which is cool. Um, and just figuring all that stuff out. So that's good. And uh, that was great. And then this was the uh, kind of last story, Erica's Quest, which was kind of a cutesy, fun little story. She's, um, how is she, season two, season three, something like that. And uh, she helped them out, thought she was going to get some money or something like that. And turns out it was ice cream, but the ice cream store is, you know, gone because, <laughs> you know, it got destroyed. Um, so she doesn't get her ice cream as payment from when she was helping everyone in uh, in the show. So now she's got to try and make some money and she's got some, you know, stuff from some of the uh, mutagen. I don't know what you want to call it uh, from the show. And, you know, they got to stop her from selling it. So it was kind of fun, kind of cutesy, just a little uh, tying up some more loose ends, which was cool. Uh, the only sad part about this is there is like zero, absolutely no uh, extras in this book. There's just 
Dark Horse Presents kind of a thing. And it's just a couple different books that are also kind of horror uh, suspense themed. So you got like Hellboy, Spirits of the Dead, uh, Sin Tatulo, and grind, some Grindhouse stuff. So The Strain. Um, so not really any extras, which is a little disappointing, but these books are pretty cheap, especially if you're buying them through our, you know, like organic price books. So it's, you know, like 25 or 30 bucks for a book. And I actually pounded this out in about an hour over lunch, which was awesome. And uh, really cool book. I really highly recommend if you liked the show, I think you will really enjoy uh, volume one of this. Uh, I will be reading volume two very soon. And then uh, I will do an overview of that too. All right, so that was a quick overview of deluxe edition volume one of Stranger Things. Like I said, it was super cool. The art was great. It, it, it was comic book. It's always hard when you're taking real life characters and then translating them to comics, but they did a really good job. Uh, all the characters they got, or all the, all the artists did a great job in translating how the characters look on screen versus how they come across on comics. And they did a really good job with it. Uh, the middle series, I was like, ah, oh, it's, or not the middle, the last series was okay. It was way more uh, cartoony, um, way, way more comic booky than the other two. So it didn't necessarily fit as well, but it was still a really cool story and uh, very cool, like a uh, slasher movie, uh, lake cabin type, you know, horror scene. And so that was really cool kind of, cause it, it's all eighties stuff. And it's very, that, that kind of, uh, horror was so prominent back then. So it was really cool to see like a camp, uh, summer camp experience with that horror genre again, and seeing it doing, being done super well. I kind of had that Scooby-Doo, uh, moment at the end. Like I would have gotten away with it, but, uh, still super fun and really enjoyed it. If you uh, are interested in these books or any other books, remember you can pick them up at our channel sponsors page, uh, organicpricebooks.com. You can use code Omnibuddy for two bucks off every order, or you can use code Omnibuddy, ship it together. That's all one word, Omnibuddy, ship it together. Get 5% off your entire order of three or more books. But beware, all those books will ship together. So if you're pre-ordering a whole bunch of books on there using that 5% discount, uh, make sure those books are all coming out in that same window. Otherwise you could be waiting a very long time for that final book to come out and then they all ship together. Uh, but it's great for books that are all in stock. So that's a great way to go too. Or if you're just a very patient person and you wanna save five extra percent. So that's it. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, do all those things. But again, the most important thing to do is comment. Not only does it help the algorithm, but more importantly, I really like chatting with you all about what you're reading. Uh, do you have any comics that you'd recommend that were adapted from screen to comic book? Uh, I know there's a bunch out there. Uh, there's, you know, every comic book's been adapted from a comic to the screen, but ha have you seen anything done really well that you really recommend that went from the screen, whether it's a movie or a TV show or something like that and brought to the comics medium. Let me know in the comments. Looking forward to chatting with y'all. That's all, take care, stay safe.